Okay, so this is a test three review. There are 20 questions in this review assignment. I'm going to skip any repeated questions, okay? If uh, there is anything uh, repeated, then I'm going to skip those questions. The first question is, what requirements are necessary for a normal probability distribution to be standard normal probability distribution? That's from section 6.1. As you can see, um, there is a difference between standard normal distribution and normal distribution. A normal distribution is a uh, standard normal if the population mean is zero and a standard deviation is one. So uh, the mean and standard deviation have the values zero and one. That is uh, the standard deviation. Um, the mean and standard deviation have the values mu equals zero and sigma equals zero. Now this is the right answer, the first one. Okay, that's number one. Number two, what does the notation Z alpha indicates? Uh, if you go to your first um, section 6.1, that's a uh, you know, standard normal distribution section, you'll be able to find out uh, the information about this notation, which is uh, the expression Z alpha denotes the score, G score with an area of alpha to its right. So uh, it's uh, the expression uh, denotes the g-score with an, with an area of alpha to its right. Second answer. Go to the next question. Find the area of the shaded region. This is the area we are looking for. The graph depicts, depicts the standard normal distribution of bone density score with the mean zero and standard deviation one. So we would like to find out the area under the curve here and uh, you know there is a, uh, a command there is a function in TI 8384 calculator normal CDF function which gives you um, you know uh, which takes the g-score and then gives the area under the curve or probability under the curve uh, to the to the left of that g-score okay but here we are looking for uh, to the right okay Okay, okay, by the way, so there is a, what is that? Okay, this one. There is a, this for, uh, formula uh, or command in the TI-8384 calculator, it takes lower value of, uh, you know, the area we're looking for, upper value of the area we're looking for. And then um, uh, if it's not a standard, a normal distribution, then uh, you can also use, uh, mean and uh, standard deviation but if it's a uh, standard <coughs> standard normal um, distribution then mu and sigma you don't have to give the value just give the lower and upper value okay that's the command we're going to use let me just uh, use that where is my ti 8384 calculator okay so um, go back here uh, second variance normal CDF function it takes the lower value so here as you can see the lower value is negative 0 point uh, negative 0 0.84 and there is no upper value but you can choose something very very huge number to the right I always choose positive uh, you know 10,000 as a uh, huge number which would approximate everything under the curve so take something bigger number you know huge number like 10,000 and then since it's a standard normal distribution, you don't have to give a mean and a standard deviation. By just taking these two value, it will calculate the area under the curve between these two value, which is in this case 0 0.7995. If you round it to the four decimal place, it's a 0 0.7995. Oh yeah, so it's a 0 0.7995. 0 0.7995. Okay. Go to the next problem. Uh, here we have area. We need to find out the g-score, and uh, by going by using the same, uh, you know, calculator, uh, uh, we can go to the second and then this uh, this tab here, which is the second. This means it's a distribution. Because we are looking for the g-score, we go down here and then we use the number three, which is inv It takes the area under the curve 
to the left to find the g-score but here we have given the area to the right so what we can do is area to the left would be 1 minus this area so I'm going to just do that calculation 1 minus this point 20 90 remember by taking this number this is the area under the curve to the left of this g-score this function this function this command takes the area under the curve to the left of that g-score and then it gives you uh, the g-score and g-score for this one would be point uh, what is that 809895 okay point eight zero nine eight nine five is this it takes the area and it gives you the uh, g score so let's try this one uh, round to the two decimal place it's a uh, point eight one point eight one okay so remember this command whatever I use in num it takes the area to the left of the g-score in this particular problem the area to the right is given but to find the area under the curve to the left it's just a 1 minus this value okay okay so it's another question from um, very same section standard normal distribution assume that a randomly selected subject is given a bone density test uh, those test score are normally distributed with a mean zero and a standard deviation one that means it's a standard normal distribution find the probability that a given score is less than negative 1.87 and draw a sketch of the region so less than negative 1.87 is this one because if you look at the graph here it's something less than negative 1.87 so what is the probability for finding the probability you can use uh, the very same command here uh, here we have given the g-score so we would like to find out uh, the probability or the area under the curve from left up to point negative 1.87 so we go to the second we use this distribution we use uh, number two which takes the lower value for this curve as you can see here on the left side there is no bound so I'm going to use a very small negative number I'm, I'm going to take negative 10,000 as a small negative number for the g-score and I'm going to uh, take up to negative 1.87 this is the negative sign you have to use okay <clears throat> so this command normal CDF uh, if you just use the lower and upper g-score it gives you the area under the curve from negative um, of this lower from this lower number to the upper number so because we don't have the lower number here whenever you go to the left side just use negative 10,000 and if you are going for the right side uh, for the upper number you can use the positive 10,000 so in this case we would like to find out the area under the curve to the left that's why negative 10,000 to negative 1.87 since it's a standard normal distribution you don't have to give a mean and a standard deviation value so if you cal if you just hit this it will give you the area under the curve to the left of negative 1.87 that is 0 0.0307 if you round it to uh, four decimal place so it's a uh, probability 0 0.0307 so that's the area under the curve which is also a probability uh, let's go to next problem problem number six um, assume that um, uh, a randomly selected subject is given a bone density test again the same similar type of problem but those test is uh, mean is zero uh, standard deviation is one that means standard normal distribution find the probability that a given score is between now you have given between negative 2.07 and 3.82 so negative um, between negative 2.07 and 3.82 so this is the graph uh, D which is uh, between negative 2.07 to 3.82 for finding this probability or the area we can use the very same command here number two which is normal CDF which takes the lower value in this case it's a negative 2.07 and then upper uh, G score which is 3.82 and uh, because it's a standard normal distribution you just have to give this to uh, to lower and upper uh, value for the g-score and it gives you the area under the curve between those two value which is 0 
if you round it to the four decimal place 0 0.9807 0 0.9807 check the answer it's right let's go to the next problem number six assume that a randomly selected subject is given a bone density test bone density test score are normally distributed with the mean zero and then deviation one that means it's a standard normal distribution draw a graph and find p17 the 17th percentile this is the bone density score separating the bottom 17 percent from the top 83 percent so it's a bottom a bottom 17 percent as you can see here this is a uh, top 83 uh, percent this is a uh, top 17 percent this is uh you know what is this it looks uh, yeah this is not right because bottom 17 means it should be uh, to the left of your middle value so this represents the bottom 17 percent okay and uh, the bone density score corresponding to p17 is the bone density score means you would like to find out the g score uh, for the 17 percent area to the left so we can go to the uh, calculator here we can use inv num uh, command which is command number three which calculates the g score for the area to the left of that um, g score which is given here it's a 17 percent 17 percent means 0.17 take that value and it gives you uh, the g score which is negative 0.95 if you want to round it to the two decimal place it's a negative 0.95 so that's the G-score for this P17 uh, percentile. Okay. <clears throat> Plus, pulse rates of Omen are normally distributed with a mean of 77.5 bits per minute and then a standard, and a standard deviation of 11.6 bits per minute. Answer the following question. What are the values of the mean and standard deviation after converting all pulse rates of Omen to G score using this formula? Whenever we use this formula, um, uh, you know, for uh, uh, the mean and then standard deviation, this is the conversion formula <clears throat> from normal distribution to the standard normal distribution. After converting that, it becomes the standard normal distribution, and then for the standard normal distribution, the mean would be zero, and then standard deviation is one the original pulse rates are measured with the units of bits per minute what are the units of corresponding g score g score doesn't have any units so g score are number without units okay the weights of the chocolate in horsey kisses are normally this is a chocolate company uh, normally distributed with a mean of 4.5338 gram and a standard deviation is 0 0.1039 gram. For the bell-shaped graph of the normal distribution of weights of Hersey Hers kisses, what is the area under the curve? So we can use the very same formula, a very same command, um, you know, from, uh, you know, you know, we just discussed about finding area under the curve between the two G score uh, we can use the same command which is uh, second and then this distribution command which is number two it takes lower g score upper g score and then um, the mean and then a standard deviation and gives you the area under the curve between those two g scores so we would like to find out area under the curve um, what is that for the bell shaped graph of the normal distribution of weights of rc cases what is the area under the curve uh, the weight of the chocolate uh, are normally distributed, uh, distributed with a mean of 4.533 gram and standard deviation this um, okay so uh, for the bell shaped graph of the normal distribution of weight of what is the area under the curve area under the curve would be always one so even if you don't have to uh, the mean is given here standard deviation is given here the area of the curve would be always one what is the mean value uh, what is the value of median okay so the median is um, is the same as the mean which is 4.5338 4.5338 what is the value of mode that is the most repeated value the mode is uh, again same thing 4.5338 mean median and mode are equal for the normal distribution 
And what is the value of the variance? It's a square of the standard deviation. It's a square of the standard deviation. So a square of the 0 0.1039, if you use your calculator, 0 0.103, sorry, 0 0.1039, square of that gives you the uh, variance, which is 0 0.0108. 0.0108 let's check it okay so um, one more one more time uh, whenever we are dealing with the normal distributed uh, bell shaped curve the area under the curve would be always 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 one so area under the bell shaped normal distributed bell shaped curve is always one so and then for this a normal distribution mean median and mode they are equal and then variance is it's a you know a square of uh, standard deviation so these are the information uh, you know you can use to solve problem like this let's go to the next problem we have given um, uh, the bell shaped curve find the area of the stated reason we would like to find out the area of this the graph to the right depicts IQ score of adults and those score are normally distributed with the mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. So there are two different ways you can uh, solve this problem using this um, table you have here. What is the area? Or you can use, um, you know, the, the calculator. I'm going to use calculator, uh, the very same command, go to the second and then distribution, take number two. It takes a lower um, IQ value, you know, here. Uh, the lower is not given it's not bounded here so we always use uh, let's say uh, something a uh, very small number I'm going to use uh, 1 million negative 1 million comma and this is uh, our upper uh, IQ level we are using 85 we would like to find out the area under the curve between negative 1 million to 85 uh, the idea of taking negative 1 million is uh, it's just a small number compared to um, you know that 85 such a way that we are trying to uh, say, hey, uh, the area under the curve to the left of 85. And then in this case, it's not standard normal distribution. This is just a normal distribution. That's why we need to use the value of mean, which is 100. And we need to use uh, the value of a standard deviation, which is 15 in this case, it's given. So if you enter it, it gives you the area under the curve to the left of 85, which is 0.158655 if you round it to the four decimal places would it would be 0 0.1587 0 0.1587 so it's a 0 0.1587 that's the area under the curve okay let's go to next problem uh, again here we would like to find out the area under the curve to the right remember this here takes uh, the lower value to the upper value in the previous problem our lower value was unknown that's why we use negative 1 million here our upper value is unknown so for the upper value we would use positive 1 million that 1 million I choose because uh, the lower number is 85 the mean is 100 so I was trying to use something which is huge compared to those numbers okay so the very same command second and this VARS which is a distribution take number two which is normal CDF and take the small number which is 85 in this case comma and then take 1 million maybe um, you know you can also use 100,000 or uh, 10,000 that's okay uh, 1 million comma you have to use the mean which is 100 you have to use the standard deviation which is 15 in this case by using this command it take it gives you the area under the curve between 85 to 1 million which is which will uh, give you approximately area under the curve to the right of 85 which is 0 0.8413 0 0.8413 so if you uh, round it to the four decimal place it's a 0 0.8413 let's check if you uh, you know go back to the previous problem which is question number nine uh, no question number 10 the area to the left was 0 0.1587 uh, to the left of 85 to the right of 85 is complement okay so that should be 0 0.8413 okay next problem which is uh, we need to find uh, 
the area between two values so it's very easy just the same command second and distribution number two and take these two uh, values 70 comma 115 comma and then the mean which is 100 and uh, comma and then standard deviation is 15 by using this command it will calculate the area under the curve between these two number which is a uh, point 8186 if you round it to the four decimal place point 8186 okay find the area of this seated region the graph to the right uh, okay same command same command uh, lower value is 108 upper value is 130 and then you will be fine I'm going to skip this very similar type of problem so uh, okay very similar question so I will go to next question yes you cannot navigate to different question in save for later mode okay so I need to do it anyway okay so very same um, command second number two hundred and eight sorry hundred eight comma hundred thirty comma mean is hundred comma and then standard deviation is fifteen that gives us area under the curve between these two a number which is 0.2742 if you round it to the four decimal place 0.2742 i did not want to do this but uh, this for some reason uh, i could not proceed so i had to this problem now i can go to the next problem okay this is another question from the same section assume that adults have iq score that are normally distributed with a mean of 96.7 and a standard deviation 24.8 find the first quartile q1 which is iq score separating the bottom 25 percent from the top 75 percent draw a graph that's a hint so remember we would like to find out uh, the g score for which uh, you know we would like to find out the iq uh, number which is actually the z score we separate bottom uh, what is that first quartile so bottom 25% bottom 25% means uh, this is the bottom 25% so the area under the curve is 0 0.25 so we would like to find out the value of IQ which is which can be found by finding the z-score such that the area under the curve to the left of this z-score is 0 0.25 so to do this we can go here use the same command second distribution number three which uh, you know inverse norm that takes the area under the curve 0 0.25 and gives the g-score such that uh, the area to the left of that g-score is uh, 0 0.25 which is negative 0 0.67 the first quartile is negative 0 0.67 okay so that's the g-score but we would like to find out uh, IQ scores okay I did something uh, okay it's not it's not the g-score we're looking for we're looking for the IQ score so after finding the z-score we have to go to uh, the IQ score which can be found let's go to section 6.2 uh, where is that section 6.2 okay yes so from non-standard normal distribution to the normal distribution this is the relation between the score and then g-score x is the score and g is the z-score but if you want to go back if you want to find out the score from the g-score then this is the formula you have to use uh, meaning uh, after calculating the z-score you multiply it by the standard deviation and you add uh, the uh, the mean to find out the actual uh, score here in this case it's IQ score so how do you do that after finding after finding the G score which is in this case negative 0.67 we found the G score and we would like to find out the IQ score which is uh, G score times the standard deviation plus the average so I'm going to calculate I'm going to just use um, what is that okay this one times it by uh, the standard deviation which is 
uh, heat enter and plus use uh, the average score which is 96.7 so uh, that is 79.97 if you want to round it to the one decimal place it's a 79 point it's a 80 actually it's 80 let's check the answer okay so remember this command uh, this second distribution and this in nerve that gives you the g-score but we are not looking for the g-score here we want to find out the actual value of x which is in this case it's a iq score so to find that we have to use this relation we can always find uh, the value of x which is iq score in this case from the g-score and for finding the g-score we can use this in nerve num a function in the ti 8384 calculator okay so let's go to the next problem engineers want to design seats in commercial aircraft so that they are wide enough to fit 99 percent of all adults accommodating 100 percent of adults would require very wide seats that would be much more expensive would be much too expensive assume adults have hip width that are normally distributed with a mean of 14.7 inch and a standard deviation of 0.9 inch find p99 that is find the hip width for adults that separates the smallest 99 percent from the one percent so remember whenever we try to find that thing we are looking for uh, a value for which let's say p99 to the left of that value to the left of that g-score the area under the curve is 99 percent 99 percent means it's a 0.99 so we would like to find out the g-score for which um, first we would like to find the g-score for which um, the area under the curve to the left is 0.99 but keep in mind in this case we want to find out p99 what is the maximum hip width so we are not looking for the g-score first find the g-score and use the very similar formula for finding the uh, hip size x after finding the g-score multiply it by standard deviation and add uh, the mean okay so let's go back to this problem here first of all in, in nerve 0.99 that gives the g-score such that to the left of that g-score the area under the curve is 99 percent but we are not looking for the g-score we are looking for the value of uh, x hip width so that can be fine by multiplying this score by standard deviation which is 0.9 in this case and enter and adding um, the mean which is 14.7 14.7 so it's which is 16.79 if you round it to the one decimal place it's a 16.8 by creating 16.8 inch uh, width uh, seat 99% of adult will uh, you know uh, will be fine with that uh, that uh, that number so that is p99 so remember the difference between the previous uh, section 6.1 and 6.2 is uh, here you know after finding the after finding the this is non um, standard of uh, normal distribution so after finding the value of a g score we can always go back to the value of uh, you know the the data we're looking for in this case it's a heap width okay by using um, this formula the relation between g square and x x represents the heap width here okay so uh, assume that this is from the central limit theorem um, I guess it's a section 6.4 the central limit theorem and uh, assume that females have pulse rates that are normally distributed with a mean of 73 bits per minute and a standard deviation of sigma 12.5 bits per minute now if one adult female is randomly selected keep in mind when you are doing the problem from the central limit theorem there are two different cases you can use if it's for individual um, individual case this is the formula we are going to use same thing but if it's for the sample this is the formula you have to use the only difference is the standard deviation case here the standard deviation is the standard deviation of the population here you need to divide the standard deviation of the population by square root of the sample size 
So for the first part, because it's just one adult, the probability of uh, can be found by finding the area under the curve for less than 77. Very same uh, formula we can use. Second distribution number two. Oh, and then uh, here we would like to find out if one adult female is randomly selected, find the probability that her pulse rate is less than 77. So the less than 77 means, uh, if you look at here, uh, this is the this is the normal distribution. Uh, what is that? The mean is 73. Mean is 73, and uh, we would like to find out the probability to the less than 77 means we would like to find out the area under the curve such that the pulse rate of that particular one randomly selected woman would be less than 77. So we can find this by using uh, this normal CDF and as you can see uh, see uh, here for this function normal CDF you need the lower value their lower case is uh, unbounded so I'm going to use very small number maybe 10,000 uh, negative 10,000 and up to 77 that is the area under the curve from negative you know negative 10,000 maybe somewhere here negative 10,000 so it will approximate approximate almost all the area under the curve so um, negative 10,000 to 77 comma uh, the mean is 73 and then the standard deviation is 12.5 12.5 and then if you just uh, close it and then hit enter it gives you the area which is actually the probability and if you round it to the four decimal places it's 0 0.6255 0 0.6255 0 0.6255 now in second case if 16 adult females are randomly selected find the probability that they have pulse rate with the mean less than 77 remember this is um, the pulse rate the value of x this is the mean of the pulse rate so here we need to use the second formula we need to use the standard deviations we need to divide the standard deviation of the population by square root of sample size which is in our case it's a uh, uh, 16 so uh, when I use a calculator we are going to use the very same command number two our uh, our uh, small value we would like to find out if we choose 16 adult females are randomly selected find the probability that they have pulse rate with the mean less than 77 so we are going to use same number like negative 10,000 comma 77 comma the mean is 73 comma but for the standard deviation instead of using 12.5 we need to divide this 12.5 by square root which is second and then x square is square root of the sample size in this case it's a 16 I can calculate that it's a 4 actually and just hit enter that will give you the area under the curve which is 0.8997 if you round it to the four decimal place it's a 0 0.8997 0 0.8997 so that's the difference between uh, these two formula the standard deviation the only difference is the standard deviation when you use you know um, normal normal CDF function the same lower value upper value uh, every uh, mean for the population but the standard deviation is sigma over square root of n that's what we have to use okay so the answer is 0 0.8997 why can the normal distribution be used in part b even though the sample size does not exist 30 remember uh, if actual uh, you know population is normally distributed which is uh, which is what we have given here then we don't need the sample size uh, more than 30 okay so there are two requirements one of the requirement if one of the requirement uh, is fulfilled either uh, the actual original uh, uh, you know actual original population is uh, normally distributed or the sample size is greater or equal to 30 then we would be fine but in this case uh, you know the original uh, distribution is normally distributed so let's read that since the mean pulse rate exceed 30 the distribution of no since the distribution uh, is of individual not sample mean 
since the original population has a normal distribution the distribution of sample means is normal normal distribution for any sample size it doesn't matter what sample size you are going to take okay so one more time part a is from you know uh, it's just a simple uh, it's not uh, actually for the sample but for part B there is a sample involved so that's the difference between these two formula okay the overhead reach distance of adult females are normally distributed with the mean of 197.5 centimeter and standard deviation of 8.9 centimeter find the probability that that uh, an individual distance is greater than uh, 210.90 so remember uh, the way we did this problem um, what is that the previous problem okay it's not letting me go back so you have to do the very same thing for this particular problem the first of all you uh, we are going to use uh, you know uh, we're going to use uh, second distribution number two and then uh, the lower value we would like to find out the probability that an individual distance is greater than 210.90 so uh, we are going to this we're going to use this formula and that can be used uh, so we want to find out you know, there is a normal distribution and uh, what is the problem here okay So, okay, okay, look at here. In this problem, uh, uh, normally distributed with the mean of 197.5, the mean is 197.5, that's the mean, and standard deviation is, uh, standard deviation is 8.9 8 centimeter. And now we would like to find out what is the probability that an individual, that's just for one, one one person or one um, one person is greater than 210.9 so 210 means somewhere here 210.9 it's the value of x so what's the probability of getting something greater than this probability of getting greater than this so here it's individual so we can use the very same formula normal cdf the lower value is 210.9 the upper value it's unbounded so we can just use uh, let's say 1 million or 10,000 or 100,000 just use the huge number compared to this 210 uh, 100,000 uh, for example comma and then use the mean which is 197.5 use the standard deviation as is which is 8.9 because it's for individual and hit enter that will calculate the area under the curve to the right uh, in between these two number actually so to the right which is 0 0.06608 so if you round it to the four decimal place it would be 0 0.0661 0 0.0661 and now the second case b part part b find the probability that the mean for 25 randomly selected distance is greater than 196.20 centimeter so remember in this we have to use the same formula normal same command the lower one is 196.2 the upper one is let's take 100,000 and then mean is given 197.5 now for the standard deviation because it's for the sample the standard deviation is 8.9 divided by square root of 25 which is 8.9 divided by square root of 25 means 5 square root of 25 is 5 so you have to divide that standard deviation by 5 to get the area okay that's the difference between part a and part b so i'm going to use that thing here normal uh, which is number two and lower one is 196.2 uh, upper one is a hundred uh, thousand and uh, mean is 197.5 and then uh, the standard deviation is 8.9 it's a standard deviation for the sample mean uh, 8.9 divided by 5 uh, and then hit enter that will give you the area which is um, which is 0.7674 so uh, if you round it to the four decimal place it's a 0 0.7674 0 0.7674 
Now choose the correct answer. The normal distribution can be used because the original population has a normal distribution. Yes, that's the right answer because the original population is normally distributed. Okay, this is um, a very similar type of problem. Uh, we have, uh, you know, like problem 16 or 17. Very same, you have to find for one, you have to find for nine, uh, and then you can answer this part. So let's do, yes, okay. Yes, okay. Why it's not giving me? Next question. Yes. Yeah, I cannot escape it. So I'm going to find the answer for this one too. I don't know why it's not letting me to skip um, for some reason. Um, it's a very same question. So I'm going to do the same thing. Uh, second, variance number two. And then uh, we would like to find out if one male college student is randomly selected, find the probability that he gains between zero kg and three kg. So the lower value is zero, upper value is three, average is uh, 1.2 kg, 1.2, and then a standard deviation is uh, 5.2. And that's all. That gives you the probability, which is 0 0.2266, 2266 If nine male college students are randomly selected, the very same formula but in this case we have to use um, we have to use instead of uh, standard deviation 5.2 we have to divide that 5.2 by square root of 9 square root of 9 means 3 so I'm going to just copy it here look at here I'm going to copy everything else 0 comma 3 comma 1.2 comma and instead of uh, standard deviation 5.2 I'm going to divide that by square root of 9, which is 3. And that gives me the answer 0 0.6061. 0 0.6061. And since the original population has a normal distribution, uh, the size, uh, you know, the sample size doesn't matter in this case. The Blank tells us that for a population with any distribution, the distribution of the sample means approaches a normal distribution as the sample size increases. It's from the central limit theorem. Okay. And uh, the last question, uh, fill in the blank. The blank states that if under a given assumption, the probability of a particular observed event is exceptionally small such as less than 0 0.05 which is less than 5% we conclude that the assumption is probably not correct what is that it's from um, central limit theorem rear event rule for inferential statistics okay